Welcome back everyone, I am Rhino and in today's video I'll be talking about the Squad 44's graphic settings and how you can optimize it to get better FPS in game and help turn those firefights in your favor. I use a 1440p monitor and I have a 3060 Ti along with the Ryzen 7 5800X CPU with 16 gigs of RAM with 2400 MHz speed each and I have the game installed in a SSD. Now that you know about my system's hardware, it will help you understand how this game performs on my PC and to help you take any decision for an upgrade. Starting off with the screen resolution, always make sure you keep your screen resolution set to your native resolution, as reducing it below the native resolution of your monitor will cause everything to look blurry. I keep my VSync turned off because I have a G-Sync compatible monitor which helps reduce the screen tearing whenever there is a change in FPS value while gaming. You can turn on the VSync if you don't have a G-Sync monitor but keep in mind VSync comes with a reasonable amount of FPS drop. But fear not, I have got an alternate fix for the screen tearing issue. Squad 44 also gives us the option to cap the FPS at any value from 0 to 9.99 and here we can use this feature to deal with the screen tearing. All you have to do is to check your in-game FPS while playing Squad 44 and whatever average FPS you get in-game, that is let's say you get 58 FPS for example on average, then you can set that FPS cap to 55 to help reduce that screen tearing. Now we come to the advanced settings. I usually keep the screen sharpening at default which is 0.50. For the anti-aliasing you can either use FXAA if you have entry level GPU but at the cost of slight simmering at the edges of the objects or you can go ahead with the TAA if you have a decent GPU but turning it off will make it look really bad. For the people who have the RTX GPUs I would suggest you to use DLSS instead of using the AA methods here. Trust me, DLSS is a blessing in this game and has improved the performance of the game by a lot since it was implemented. Now coming to super sampling which as it says in the description upscales the resolution to a higher one and then downscales it to reduce jagged edges. I will suggest you to keep it on if you are using DLSS but if you are using a double A setting like the FX AA and TAA then keep this turned off as it impacts the FPS by about 50%. For the textures you can set it according to your GPU VRAM. If you have less than 4 GB of VRAM then I would suggest you to keep it at medium or high. Or if you have anything beyond 4 GB of VRAM then you can go ahead and keep it at high or epic. The effects reduce or increase the amount of particle effects we have in game like the fire particles, explosions, smoke, rain and so on. I see about 15% difference with this one between high and cinematic settings. I suggest you keep this at high or epic. View distance matters a lot in games like Squad 44, so I would recommend you to keep this at high or epic at all costs. Foliage determines the amount of grass and tree details we have in the game. I saw about 5% of difference between low and epic settings and I suggest you to keep it at high for a balance between immersion and performance. Shadows in Squad 44 are well optimized and I saw a 10% difference between low and epic settings. So I would suggest you to keep this at medium or high. I didn't see much FPS difference in depth of field effect in this game. I would recommend keeping this at high if you want a more cinematic effect which is more of a personal taste. Anistropic filtering is a technique used to improve the quality of textures applied to the surfaces of 3D objects when drawn at a sharp angle. I observed a 5% difference between 2 and 16 times anistropic filtering and I would suggest you to keep it at 16 to maintain visual fidelity. There is a 2% difference in FPS when turning on the bloom effect and it's more of a personal choice if you want to keep it turned on. I recommend turning it on. Lens flare does not have a noticeable impact on performance so I would suggest you to keep it turned on but again it's a personal taste to consider. Keep the motion blur turned off if you don't want to get nauseated. Keep the screen space reflection turned on as I didn't see much 
performance difference with it and it looks really good. Turning on the volumetric fog caused a 6% decrease in performance. I don't see much fog with it enabled or disabled in game to be honest, so I would suggest you to keep it off. Ambient occlusion affects the shadow behind objects and I saw a very negligible performance drop with it enabled, so keep it turned on. Now the last but not the least, we come to the DLSS and NIS settings. I would recommend you to stay away from the NIS setting as it makes the object's edges simmer too much. But the DLSS on the other hand is very well implemented in Squad 44. I would recommend you to keep DLSS on if you have a RTX card and keep it at quality settings if you have a 3060 or 3060 Ti and beyond. And that concludes my video on how to optimize Squad 44 to get better performance and win those fights easily. If you think this video helped you then make sure to give a thumbs up and share it with your fellow Squad 44 squads. Rhino signing out.